So we have some long-term follow-up using a brutinib. The Resonate 2 study was the frontline study that led to approval for ibrutinib and frontline CLL and we now have five years of follow-up showing 70% of patients are still in their first remission at five years so that's uh, excellent results and long-term follow-up data. The data for acalabrutinib as frontline therapy for CLL is less mature but it looks equally strong that uh, to a brutinib at the same point in time. Um, so now that acalabrutinib has uh, an indication in frontline CLL, it will be very interesting to see how practitioners choose one over the other. They seem to be quite comparable in terms of efficacy. Uh, there may be a slight advantage for acalabrutinib in terms of tolerability over ibrutinib, and I think as people get more experience with it that the, they, they might be attracted to that tolerability. Um, acalabrutinib is a twice a day medication, whereas ibrutinib is a once a day medication, so there might be trade-offs there in terms of the tolerability versus the convenience and the ease. Um, so. I guess, bottom line, this is a good problem to have. Uh, two incredibly active BTK inhibitors that are you know, bo both options for management of CLL.